Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with another configuration. Yes, so you may, may have got bored with it, right? Anyways, these are uh, simple things. You do not need to get bored. The seventh, let's say, is the dual supply bias. Is the dual supply bias. Now, what does this mean? So, again, we would have two supplies. But in this, we would have our VCC back. So, we have our VCC. We have our collector resistance. And, and, and have a look. We have what? We have the emitter resistance as well. And over here, we have a negative VE. VCC, RC, RE. So this current would be IE, this current would be IC, we have base resistance RB, the current through which is IB and this is grounded. This is grounded, right? Yes. So, so what do you have? What do you have? This is the same thing. The output is a, this is the common emitter configuration. We are back to common emitter. Where the input is applied, the base output is taken as the collector. You can you can have your uh, capacitors over here as well for the understanding purpose only. We are not interested in the working of the capacitors. Why? Because we are studying the DC analysis. Dual supply bias has an important application. We can get more voltage swing. We'll see that in the AC analysis. Leave it for now. Just to know. Just to know. The main application is we can get more voltage swing. When the peak voltage is reached, so the transistor have a chance to get out of the active region. And to control that or anyway, just let it go. Let it go. So we have the we have the what? The the input KVL for instance. So let's say we have KVL to the input side. So the input side KVL would suggest what you have a, a negative IBRB, right? Negative IBRB, negative VBE, negative IERE. This is equal to minus a VEE, right? Yes, sir. What do you have? You can write IE is equal to IC plus IB. You can write IE is equal to IC plus IB. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just let me write it in this way. IB would come out to be what IB? IB comes out to be VEE minus VBE let's say we do it in a little different manner in this video divide by RB so this is your base current right where you can write your IE as the sum of the two IC plus IB isn't it like this it is then from here you could write what you could also say IC would be approximate IC is beta times IB you can also do it in this way and you know the the basic relations you put this in this in IB and, and you're done similarly the output KVL you apply the KVL to the output loop you've got the input current IB okay yes VB is 0 0.7 volts similarly the output loop so VCC minus ICRC minus VCE so this is a VBE and this is a VCE and then minus IERE and is equal to minus VEE or plus VEE is equal to zero so from here you can find out the collector to emitter voltage collector to emitter voltage VCE would be what would be VCC minus ICRC minus IERE plus VEE and this would be equal to uh, no 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 zero this is it 
This is your VCE. Where again you can put what? You can have your IE. If you don't have IE, you can put it as IC plus or IB. Or IE is approximately equal to IC. If the base current is very small, you can even neglect it. Neglect it, right? Yes. Similarly, you can discuss the stability for this as well. Let's say we discuss the stability. We don't discuss an example on this. So the stability for, for what? For the dual supply. So this would be what? This would be, uh, you know, di differentiating this equation. Differentiating this equation. Let's say I name it as 1. Let's say I name it as 1. So differentiating 1. Differentiating 1 implies what? You would have, have a look from here, okay? You would have a negative DIB DIC into RB. Negative DIB DIC into RB. Yes? Yes, then you have what minus zero minus R E minus zero minus R E minus D I B D I C R E D I B D I C R E and then plus zero and this is let's say equal to zero to find the maximum stability. Solve this for yourself. Solve this for yourself. Your DIB DIC comes out to be what? DIB DIC comes out to be negative RE upon RB plus RE. RB plus RE. If you put it in the stability factor, this implies what? The stability factor is what? 1 plus beta over 1 minus beta times DIB DIC. So this is negative RE divided by RB plus RC. What do you have? Have a look. You have improved the stability very much. You have improved the stability very much. And similarly, if you put the RB value to be very small, if the RB very value is very small, let's say RB is a value approaching to zero, a very small value as compared to the others. So if RB is zero, this is RB plus RE, okay? This is RE, yes. So if RB becomes 0, RE upon RE would become 1, negative negative would become positive, S would become 1 plus beta over 1 plus beta. So if RB is 0, S is equal to 1, which is a very low value, which is a very low value, which is a very good value. So which means it is quite a stable configuration, a very much stable configuration. I told you the ideal value of S should be 0 and this is approximately 0. So this is a very good configuration if the base resistance is kept very low right so the sensitivity is quite reduced by the dual supply biasing example you can have on your own self just give them some values and find out find them out do you want to take some as a homework so let's say let's say we take a homework let's say we take a homework problem vcc is let's say given to be 20 volts rc is 2 kilo ohms rc is 2 kilo ohms right I, uh, RB is let's say 3 kilo ohms or 1.5 kilo ohms and then RE is given to be 3 kilo ohms beta is let's say given to be 100 and you can find out the remaining things you can find out IB you can find out IE you can find out VCE IE find out IE IB VCE so this is your homework. This is your homework. All right. If anything, you need anything else, just you can give it a value by yourself. I just wrote it down. Anyways. Let's say we talk about the voltage divider biasing with dual supply. In the dual supply bias, we also talk about the voltage divider biasing with dual supply. Voltage divider biasing with dual supply so let this be number number 8 let this be number 8 so what do you have what do you have the voltage divider was like this you have a VCC right then you have an RC you have an RE, you have grounded it. 
Similarly, you have over here to, toward the base, you have what? You have the, the base resistance was divided into two parts, R1 and R2. So this is R1, this is R2, this is for instance the current through the base IB, this is RC, this is the current IC, this is RE, this is IE. So what do you have? The second biasing potential is over here. This is negative VEE. This is negative VEE. Now what can you do is, you need to find out the Thevenin equivalent. You need to find out, first of all, first of all, you need to find out the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Which means what? You need to find out the Thevenin equivalent resistance and the voltage, the Thevenin equivalent voltage. So for that, what do you do? You have got two sources over here. So for that, we would apply the superposition theorem. The superposition theorem says what? That you can, you can consider only one source at a time right so if the superposition theorem is applied let's say we take vcc is taken if we are considering vcc so which means that negative vee is zero let's say number one we take what that minus of vee is equal to zero volts so what do you have the circuit is like this okay it's vcc r1 r2 minus a vee we have to point we have to find at this point the Thevenin resistance and the Thevenin voltage. So if V E is zero, only V C C is acting, which means what? That V Thevenin is V Thevenin is what? V Thevenin is uh, V C C times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 from the voltage divider rule. You, you take the total voltage applied you, and you are finding it through which resistance multiplied with that divided by the sum of the total resistances. This is the first. This is the first for the first case. For the second case what do you have? For the second case take the next one to be zero. That is take VCC to be zero. If VCC is zero, V Thevenin in this case would be what? It would be a negative VEE times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 in the same way. So which means the net V Thevenin that is our own that is what we are interested in that would come out to be the sum of the two. So you add one into, right? We add one into, so that would be VCC R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Or you can take this as common as well. You can take this as common as well. Let me just take it as a common. R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and this is multiplied with VCC minus a VEE. -E. Yes, yes. And similarly for R Thevenin, what do you need to do? Ground both the terminals. So for R Thevenin, you need to do, you need to ground both the terminals. So if you ground both the terminals, which means this is connected to the ground and, and this one is also connected to the ground. So have a look, these two are acting in parallel. So R Thevenin would be what? It would be R1 in parallel with R2. That is R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Is that fine? It is. So you can have what? You can have what? You can draw the, you can redraw the circuit using your uh, equivalent model. And that is what? So let's say, let's say where should I, I draw it over here, a smaller one, right? So that is, this is your emitter, like this is your emitter resistance. This is negative VEE. This is RE. Similarly, you have your collector resistance. RC and this is your VCC. Now the Thevenin, the Thevenin is only for the base terminal, right? So for the base terminal, so which means what you have your R Thevenin over here. And you have the DC voltage plus to minus V Thevenin over here. And that is it. The direction of the current would be the same. The base current would, find, would pass through this, IE. And this would be IC. Is that fine? If the value of Vitevenin is negative, if Vth is negative, does it mean that this is in the this is in the cutoff region? No, this does not mean. Vitevenin does not have anything to do with the cutoff region, right? Yes, that is your own simple analysis based on the previous ones, that is VCE or whatever it is. Fine? Yes. 
this is the same dual supply bias okay so you can find out the input kvl and the output kvl you can find out the input kvl and the output kvl and you can find the parameters right i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do it yes apply the input kvl what will you find you'll find ib how V Tevin and minus IBRB minus VBE minus IERE. Yes? Do you want me to do it? Let's say I do it. Let's say I do it. Actually, I don't have space, so that is why I was talking about. V Tevin and minus IBR Tevin and minus VBE minus uh, IERE. And this is not equal to 0, this is equal to minus of VEE or you can write it as plus of VEE and this is equal to 0, right? So from here you can write the value of IB and where can I write it? Let's say I write it over here. So IB would come out to be IB would come out to be V Tevenen minus VBE minus IERE plus VEE whatever are the things so these are a lot of things so you can do it by yourself from here just I just cannot write it this much so just write the value of IB from here and similarly for the output voltage that is plus minus VCE apply the output KVL this is your plus minus VCE this is your plus minus VBE so similarly apply the output KVL and you can find out the value of VCE from there right and you can do the, the assumptions as well again based on your numerical problem whatever the values are given you have the value of beta given you can say i e is i c plus i b you can write i e approximately equal to i c neglecting the value of i b right that is very small in the micro pairs range i c is beta times i b i e is beta plus one times i b that is another relation right this is also a valid relation that i e is beta plus one times i b so you can do all these relations based on your numerical problems the stability factor you can relate to this one r tevinen in place of rb the r tevinen would come and r tevinen is smaller than rb why because the par the equivalent of a parallel combination of resistance is smaller than the smallest value in the combination right so which means r tevinen would be if r1 is smaller than r2 so r tevinen which is the parallel combination of r1 and r2 r tevinen would be even smaller than r1 so which means we have got a more more toward that condition in the voltage divider biasing right yes so that is it for this video that is it for this configuration let me tell you that that the voltage divider biasing is the most important right and it is more towards a stable one as well and it's the most widely used so i finish this video over here see you in the next one maybe with some other things till then take care goodbye